to Purple Daily and happy Vikings Packers week. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that we're halfway into uh, into like the preparation for week one of the Vikings season here. We are going to pick the Vikings schedule for the first time since like, I don't know, when's the last time we did this? And then we did it randomly in July before training camp. So we'll, we'll go on the record our, our, our last picking the schedule before the actual season starts. And, uh, and also we'll get into the football nerd segment of the week. A quick shout out to Federated Insurance. Federated Mutual Insurance Company has been helping business owners in the state of Minnesota for over 100 years based in Owatonna. They are one of us. They are uh, proud supporters of Minnesota sports teams. It helps so much if you have an insurance company that gives you peace of mind as you navigate the challenges of running your business. Find out more about Federated and all the resources they have at federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, does it, does it feel like the start of NFL season for you? Or does it, just, it, it, does it just kind of feel like, oh, that snuck up and there's no fans and it's going to be weird? Like, where do you stand? The latter, this? totally. It does not. Yeah. It, it's Packer week. It's yeah. the Wednesday yeah. of Packer week. And it, it does not feel like the Wednesday of Lions week. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I think that this... So... I hate, for the most part, the exhibition games, right? Because they just, they they drag on and they're them. not much fun. The third one is interesting for a half or a little more than that. But it, I now actually appreciate what those games mean because they at least build up, right? Like, what's the build up? No exhibition games, no fans of practices, no off-season camps at all. What's the buildup? There's no there's no buildup. The season's just now magically suddenly here, and it feels yeah. weird. It does feel weird. like Because usually training camp is the start when you get to that last week in July, and training camp is the start of this slow cook. Yes. And you're, exactly. and you're, and you're almost like, oh, I can't. Oh, man, another preseason game. Just in, you know, inject the regular season into my veins. And now it's kind of like, oh, well, they just started practicing like two weeks ago. And well, I guess it's, I guess it's week one now. And we'll see what happens. So, Declan, on a, on a one to ten scale, where, where's your excitement right now for Vikings Packers week? Uh, I, I would say it's probably a seven, which I know is probably more bullish than than most people right now. I, I think it's because maybe the weather as like it feels like fallout here, which is like abnormally colder weather for early September here in Minnesota. But I I am very excited. It's Vikings Packers week, even with no fans. Um, I'm just ready for some football, man. Hank Williams style. I know he's not on Monday Night Football anymore, but I am ready. Yeah for some football so bring it on i love how like they, they've dusted off hank williams a couple times and then when either he says something that's kind of racist yeah, the country or gets something else happens, no, hank williams. Right, we'll put hank we'll just put hank williams back over here for a while put him in mothballs yeah and if you're under the age of 35 you don't really know like why he's relevant Are anyway ready but- to be offended <laughs> on monday night football <laughs> <laughs> so uh hank williams will probably see you in a couple of years when uh, when everything blows over so all right uh before we get into picking the schedule and the football nerd segment of the week here dalvin cook and kirk cousins both speaking to the media today and i just want to pull a couple different excerpts i'm just like i don't have the audio of this right now because we're just following this on twitter as we uh, as we record the show today um kirk cousins was asked about the next level for him what does the next level look like? And what has Mike Zimmer told you about what the next level looks like? And and his answer was sort of two parts. The first answer was very much generic. Well, winning football games is the next level. I just need to win as many football games as possible. It's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. But the other thing he said was that he needs to be better on off-schedule plays. So when the play breaks down or when a defensive lineman breaks through the offensive line and, and forklifts, you know, Pat Elfline or something mm-hmm. that on those off schedule plays, he needs to be better. Or the one that I could speak into Vikings Packers week when you're rolling out to the right and you're running for your life a little bit on first down and first down and goal, yeah. not third down, fourth down and goal. And you throw an interception to in the back of the end zone. Like those are plays that can't happen. So what do you make of Kirk Cousins sort of whether it's the team telling him or him doing some self-evaluation saying the next level for me is to be better on these off schedule plays. It's the same as at the start of camp when I think he talked about um, scrambling more and and taking off more. It, it's it's at Kirk's age to me, it's Kirk telling you what you know he can improve on because he knows you want to hear that he's going to improve on those things. I don't think Kirk's changing, and that doesn't mean that Kirk's a bad player. Yeah. But like this whole thing with Kirk, look if Kirk goes outside the box at work what Kirk is good at the results are going to be bad okay he's going to fumble more he he is if it's a scripted play 
where he rolls out and throws a pass. He's pretty damn good, okay? But if I now suddenly say, off script, let's do this, let's do that, there are some QBs, and we can watch them, who are brilliant at that, all right? And if Kirk was 23 or 24, I might say, oh, okay, room for improvement here, dude. I like that. I think Kirk is very much into, when when it comes to quarterback play, I think Kirk is very much into telling you what you know he can improve upon and therefore want to hear. Um, I think privately the coaching staff has to tell him, Kirk, you know, you can talk all you want. We don't care. But when it comes to, you know, if you are going to go off script now, I'm going to get creative on this play. That's a danger. And I, and, and I would warn him again, I would warn him if you, if things break down, Kirk, the best thing that, that you can do is act like that. That football is your child. <laughs> Hug it, <laughs> embrace it to you, and protect it with your yeah. life. I, I tend to agree. I think you know it, if if he starts because this is the second time where he's talked about either off script plays or wanting to run more. And you know if if his answer to you know what do I need to be better at? Well, I need to be better on off script plays. And if he thinks I need to create more positive plays out of the off script plays, I would say your first focus should be don't throw a game-changing interception and don't fumble on the off-script plays. One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time is Peyton Manning. And when you think of Peyton Manning, when things go off-script, you don't think, oh, man, like what a great improviser. What A guy that could just, just olays those pass rushers and uses his feet. No, you think when something goes off-script and like a defensive end breaks through, yep. he literally cowers to the ground and protects the football Yes, and says, all right, take a five-yard loss here dust myself off and, and live to see the next play. Yes. And sometimes Kirk feels obligated well, to extend a play to make something positive happen when it's just not there. You just brought up. Wow. This is intriguing. Play the sounder for a second, please. Which we have a million football. The football. football sounder. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you just, brought, like that. you just brought up some, you brought up a guy who was fantastic at not allowing the script to break down Peyton Manning. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. so it's, don't, it's also unfair to compare. Kirk no, no, Cousins I know, Manning. I know. But if your goal, but what are those guys like Peyton? And you're right. There's very few. What are they good at? They are good at following the script and hurry. And they might hurry it to keep it on script to play, but it didn't go off script. I will always go back to, I believe it was, well, it's probably now 15 years back or so. Charlie Johnson who replaced McKinney here at left tackle and was, God bless him, a train wreck, okay? He was Peyton Manning's left tackle for a season or two. Okay, he wasn't any good. So how did that work? Peyton Manning was so quick at delivering the ball on script, on his script, yes. that it wasn't an issue that his left tackle sucked. Peyton Manning. But, but, Kirk can't, but Kirk's not going to do that, and I, and I appreciate that and respect that. But what I'm saying is don't then say... I'm going to make something happen once what was supposed to happen is now gone. I think we're Peyton Manning. And again, I, I now I feel like we're down this path of like Kirk Cousins and Peyton Manning. It's like, uh, it's no, I'm telling you, uh, but but we're both saying better to avoid disaster. Yes. Than to force something because it broke down. But what, what Peyton Manning was brilliant at from a from a macro perspective is he when he walked up to the line of scrimmage, played out basically all of the scenarios like, OK, this is the defense that I think they're going to run based on the look that they're giving me in a perfect world. This is what I will do. This is my first read. But then he's also thinking, all right, if that linebacker blitzes and gets through, where do I like, where is my absolute like panic button throw? That's not going to shipwreck the game here. And so he's thinking about the worst case scenario on a regular basis to avoid the worst case scenario. Right. Mm hmm. And sometimes I don't think Kirk thinks about the worst case scenario. I think he just like, he's a very positive guy and he's, you know, he's, he's trying to, you know, positive self-talk and all these things. And he could stand to uh, take a page out of the old Bobby Knight book, the positive, the, the power of negative thinking, which isn't, you know, be a bleep hole, which is what Bobby Knight is. It's always prepare for the worst possible thing that could happen so that at least you're not shocked by it and it's not going to catch you off guard. And, and I think like to me, the next level for Kirk is not, can you Michael Vick your way to three more touchdowns? It's, yeah. can you take that interception at Green Bay off the board? Is there something you can do with the line of scrimmage to plan for the worst case scenario if your right guard is having a bad game, right? right? Yes. That's and, what I think. And the reality of Cousins is 
for the most part, he is not going to be capable of winning that game against San Fran. Like that's got to be the acceptance. Diggs, he could he could have thrown to Diggs. He didn't. So th- there are certainly some plays that I think if you go back and watch the film of that game that you could find that would have been nice if he made. But to go into that game and be like, you've got to do this, Kirk, is probably beyond Kirk's scope. And that and that's where Kirk breaks down. But Kirk's all Kirk's also going to put you in a position where you're not going to be terrible. So I just I think the thing with Kirk, and this extends from the fan base to the media to Kirk is what's the realistic expectation for you? Yep. Uh, Dex, what is your like number one hope and expectation for Kirk Cousins in 2020? To not freak out. To not have to deal with those situations in Green Bay where he freaks out on first and goal. And even, like he was playing so bad that day, and yet he could have erased it all with just one mistake-free drive and and get a big win in Lambeau, and he, and he, cost, and he basically cost the team a win. Um, I I just don't want Kirk Cousins to start freaking out. I think he did a lot better job of not blaming everyone from year one to year two. We're always putting the blame on someone else, I should say. Um, And I think he stepped up there a lot from a maturity standpoint. But I I just want him to stop freaking out and and also have the cojones to to once you're down and once things aren't going right, how do you adjust? And that that is a hard thing to just adapt and uh, figure out. And when you're in age 30 season and you've been in the league for six, seven years, but Stop freaking out is my probably my biggest advice to Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I mean, it's it's true. It's true. Um, Dalvin Cook also spoke and was obviously asked about his contract status and the fact that Alvin Kamara is about to get a contract and Derrick Henry got a contract and like other running backs are getting contracts and you haven't yet. And and, and just to paraphrase Dalvin, he uh, he's saying all the right things. He's saying, hopefully my agent and the Vikings can come to terms on something that represents my value, but... Until that happens, I just need to wait my turn. And so he said, if Mike Zimmer, you know, calls on me to play football, I'm going to play football. So he's, you know, he's so he's not gonna. He's you know, employee of the an year, man. He's employee of the decade. And you know, I I would not fault him if he decided. Listen, like based on my injury history and my window to make life changing money, I'm gonna stand my ground even further or whatever you know whatever that looks like. But it sounds like he's gonna go into the season and the Vikings are gonna go into the season and he's gonna play on. What's his cap number? Like $2 million and like one and a half that. in cash or something. Yeah. So um, I think this ends with either a very team friendly deal for the Vikings or it ends with Alex Madison as the starting running back in 2021. I don't think the Vikings are going to overpay or even maybe even like, you know, properly pay Dalvin Cook based on how much money they have to pay some of these other players. If you are the Vikings, aren't you thrilled? Like this is ideal. He he is yeah. Cook has come in. As far as I can tell, he has not complained publicly. He has definitely not complained He's one a bit. Pro, man, he's a pro. But but I mean, it's crazy in some ways. Uh, but if I'm the Vikings, I'm going to use this guy for everything he is possibly worth in 2020, and let the chips fall where where they may. And if he wants to take a team friendly deal, that's great. And if he doesn't, that's fine too. Um, but for a team that's up against the cap. And we are talking about a guy that could have made your life difficult. Like he could have made things more difficult. He has not made it difficult at all. If I'm zimming the boys, I'm loving this. This is absolutely ideal. And Dalvin Cook is going to get the ball. Uh, I'm going to hand him the ball. I'm going to throw him the ball. I'm going to get creative as hell with how I use him. This is one of the most um, player to team friendly situations for a guy who could push back that I have ever seen. Like, think about this. Yeah. When's the last time that you had what I think we could all debate is a absolute star player going into a contract year in which he is going to be criminally for what he does underpaid. And it's just go time. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's so tough because if you're Dalvin, you don't really have that much leverage. Like no. what, what you have to do is the player association screwed you. you. You have to force your way into either. Cause if you, if you get franchised, it's, it's not ideal for you, but it's, it's like a guaranteed life changing sum of money. It's like 12 or $13 million in your pocket for next year. And you never have to give that money back. So at the very least, you have to play your way into a franchise tag or into some sort of like, market competition for your services to get that money. I would love to see the, the contract that got pulled off the table three weeks or a, a month ago now, right before the Ngakwe trade. 
I would love to see what they turn down because I have a feeling that was a massive mistake. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. Hey, before we get to picking the Vikings schedule here, and this is our last time to go on the record about what we think the Vikings wins and losses are going to be, a quick shout out to PodMN. PodMN is a brand new app. If you're a Minnesotan and you're interested in discovering local podcasts, you want to discover Minnesota podcasts, sports, politics, whatever it may be, you can download the PodMN app in the Apple or Google Play stores for free. You can also get rewarded for listening to podcasts on the PodMN app. So PodMN and PodMN.com. All right, gentlemen, Declan, Judd, are you guys ready to pick the Viking schedule here? course no oh, I'm, I'm ready. Always ready to pick schedules. Exactly. we're gonna go we're gonna go game by game declan's gonna bring it up on the youtube page here youtube.com slash purple daily podcast let me fire up some music here for us that too loud. Are we good there i'm producing here and i'm flying the plane that so sounds sweet in my headphones okay sounds good. perfect so we're gonna start we're gonna go declan judd and then i'll round it out and let's all keep track of our wins and losses here so that we aren't uh you know getting bogged down i've got mine done so yes oh wow i'm go. i'm literally going off the top of my head here i just looked at it i just looked and i came up with uh all my results all right so here it is home against green bay this weekend declan goff oh that's a win that's a win baby that's a win vikings win at home week one no fans doesn't matter that's a win thanks al davis just win baby judd's all good that's a win it's a win they'll split with the packers but that one's the win it's a win for me as well Nothing else needs to be said. Vikings are going to beat the Packers at home. No fans. At Indianapolis, and we'll talk more about that game throughout the rest of the week, but uh, Indianapolis on the road. Declan? I think that's a win. Um, it'll be tough uh, because there actually will be fans, some semblance of fans there, but I, I, Philip Rivers, I, I'm not as big of a fan of the Philip Rivers fan club as Mackie. I like to think maybe I'm like, like Speaker of the House when it comes to the Philip Rivers fan club. I like him a lot, but he's got nothing left in the tank. They don't scare me at all. I think the Vikings get a win in Indy. Yeah, the offensive coordinator for the Colts yesterday said, we still think he's got some gas left in the tank, all right? And so if the Colts offensive coordinator is saying that... Diesel? I'm saying, man. Now, it'd be funny if the Colts offensive coordinator came out and said the opposite. It's like, guys, I got to be honest. This dude's totally cooked. Did you see him throw the ball last year? He's worse now. He's throwing end over end into 100 mile per hour wins, and it just looks terrible. But uh, we signed him for $20 million, and we're screwed now. Uh, Judd, at Indianapolis. I'm with Declan. Vikings are 2-0 and coming out of uh, this game. It's a win. Yeah. I mean, the Vikings picked off Phillip Rivers when he was comfortable in San Diego or Los Angeles like 100 times last year. How so. is he going to fare with Hunter and Ngakwe coming from each end? He's not. <laughs> Thank you. I think <laughs> you're right. He's not going to fare. Uh, home against Tennessee, one of the surprise teams in the NFL last year. Declan. I th- the Vikings should get a win here. Um, I'm not as big on Ryan Tannehill playing out of his mind like he did over the last 10 weeks of the season last year. I think Tennessee, who people are really high on right now, and they had a nice little run of the AFC Championship game, I think they come crashing hard down to earth. In fact, I will even say they don't make the playoffs in 2020. Um, I think Ooh. the Vikings get a win. This is the first game in which I think... Uh, so I think they're going to get off to a good start against the Packers at, at home. This is the first game in which I think no fans is going to impact them. Because it's going to be a very sterile environment. It's an AFC team that's pretty good. But, I mean, yeah, I'm going loss here. I would definitely go win with fans. But I think that this is going to have an impact on this team and this defense especially. So, loss to the Titans here. Yeah, this is they're they're definitely going to lose a home game or two that you don't expect them to. I don't think it's this one. I think they start the season three now. I think I think the schedule sets up for them to start the season uh, on, on a high note. So I'm going to say three and zero to start here, and then at Houston, week four, Declan. Yeah, this is your first loss. Uh, I, I think Houston's going to be awesome this season. I'm excited that these two teams and the Chiefs and the Texans will kick things off on Thursday night football. And I think the Texans are very good. Deshaun Watson's awesome. He got paid. He deserves it. I think the Vikings probably lose in Houston, even with Bill O'Brien being a buffoon. He'll do something to screw it up. But Deshaun Watson's too good. Not to the playoffs, though, Dex. Not to the playoffs, right? That's right. Buffoon is one of my favorite words. That's a great one of my favorite insult words. And Bill O'Brien definitely fits the, well, what's the Matt avatar Patricia, of a buffoon. He's got to be a buffoon, too, then, right? Uh, Bill O'Brien, just in terms of how they look, like the, just like if you just looked at the avatar of their head, Bill O'Brien looks more like a buffoon than Matt Patricia. Yes. They're, they're both buffoon. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. It definitely is. 
Is he the most buffoon looking coach in the NFL just based on how they how they operate and what they look like? Well, I think my guy gives him a shot, a I, run for I, I like a run. Patricia, okay. like I feel like incompetent, you know, like just incompetent. Like I wouldn't, I don't know if I call him buffoon because he's a he's a good defensive coach. Like Bill O'Brien is a buffoon. Disheveled. He looks disheveled. Yes. He's got the neck beard. Totally. Bill O'Brien looks a lot to me like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that he Flintstone pedals, look. pedals his car to work every day. Barefoot all the time. Trading nine for Sean Picks for his running back. He's always barefoot. All right, so how how do they fare against buffoon Bill O'Brien? They lose because I I think this is going to be one game in which the quarterback is not going to uh, freak out when the pressure comes from uh, Daniil Hunter and Unique Ngakwe, and so they lose at Houston. Okay. I I also have them losing at Houston. Just that this is a game they can definitely win, but Deshaun Watson is so good, and even though he doesn't have the best coach and he lost one of his big-time weapons. Um, I I do think this is going to be a problem game for the Vikings here, too. Plus, and this is the case in Week 1, too, you've got young cornerbacks that that are going to be exposed to some extent. Like They're not just going to come in and be amazing. Like The hope is that the cornerbacks will get better throughout the course of a season. Absolutely. At Seattle in Week 5, Declan. I mean, I I would love to pick... Put, put a nice road upset win somewhere on this schedule, but until the Vikings can prove to me that they can win in Seattle, I, I can't do it yet. So uh, unfortunately, I have the Vikings dropping back-to-back games. I think in my initial pick, when we first did this in May when the schedule released, I said they would win. Uh, I, I'm walking that back. I'm walking that back. I'm pulling a Kirk Cousins a little bit. I, I, I don't think the Vikings get a win in Seattle. I think they go to 3-2. and two. Dudley? Uh I'll pick the Vikings to win in Seattle wow. the day that Russell oh. wait wait the day that Russell Wilson is no longer the quarterback of the Seahawks they have not won in Seattle since uh, Brad Childress beat them in 2006 and that required when Chester a Taylor had a 90 night like yes exactly right so yeah uh, as long as uh, Russell Wilson's their quarterback I am not picking against the Seahawks playing the Vikings in Seattle. So the Vikings will lose this game and fall to two and three in my schedule. It's also the first primetime game. For three the consecutive defeats, by the way, on wow. my schedule. I hate to tell Oof. you about that. And I'm just going to say ditto on everything you guys said about that Seahawks game. Until the Vikings prove it, like it's a loss on the schedule right now. So home against Atlanta in week six, Declan. I, I like Matt Ryan a lot. Um, I think he's a pretty good quarterback. I actually thought, what was it, two years or last year when the Vikings opened the season, I thought the Vikings were going to have trouble in their home opener against these Falcons, and that wasn't the case at all. Um, but I, I think the Vikings should be able to get uh, bounce back from two road losses, go back at home with no fans, and maybe possibly fans there eventually in October. I know we haven't completely ruled that out. Regardless, I think the Vikings get a win against the Falcons at home. I'm with Declan. Yep. They, the, I, I think the Falcons are a decent team. I don't think they're a great team. I'm shocked they didn't make some type of coaching change, which they did not do with their head coach. And Matt Ryan is good, but I don't think he can do it by himself. Uh, there will be some pressure on him. Vikings will win that game and break their two game, or I'm sorry, three game losing streak. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think this is a win for the Vikings. Now, Atlanta, people sleep on Atlanta, especially because in that division, it's like, oh, Tom Brady's in the division now. And, and, um, and obviously the New Orleans Saints have been one of the best teams in the NFL for a long time. And so, because Atlanta gave up that massive lead in the Super Bowl and then hasn't gotten back to that point, people just sort of leave them out of the equation. But that's a team that's not a pushover. I still think the Vikings win that game. By week in week seven, and then you get the second of your two games against Green Bay at Lambeau Field for week eight, Declan. Give me a win, man. Give me a win in Lambeau. Last year they basically had it if Kirk Cousins didn't throw it to the, throw an interception on first and goal. And I just I think the Packers are coming down hard to earth. They're probably still a playoff team. Um, they're obviously not going to be 13 and three again. I think the Vikings get a, a, a big win in Lambeau. I'm going uh, a split in the season series between the Vikings and the Packers. I am giving them a close loss in this game. Yeah, it's a season split for me too. Here, I just I, I would be shocked if they swept Green Bay. Uh, but I think both these games are going to be closely contested, and so it, it'll be. If they lose in Week One, I would say that they win in Week Eight. I just don't think there's going to be a sweep either way here. Home against Detroit in Week Nine, Declan. That this is just a win. I I I I, I don't really see the Vikings having any trouble against uh, Matt Patricia's Lions, even though recently Detroit has given uh, the Vikings some fits at home. I think historically the Vikings have dominated them. I think they get a win at home. Adrian Peterson demands the ball all day long. Adrian Peterson fumbles no fewer than two times and turns it over to the Vikings. This is a Viking win as Adrian Peterson returns to U.S. Bank Stadium to lead the Vikings to a win while wearing Honolulu blue. Adrian Peterson, formidable inside U.S. Bank Stadium in this game. 
I think he runs 11 times for 66 yards and a touchdown, but ultimately <laughs> complains after Does the game. Does he fumble? He doesn't fumble in oh, this see, game. That, no. Now it's not real. But he it? complains after the game about not getting enough touches. If you would have gotten 20 touches, maybe they win. The Vikings win this game against the Lions. <laughs> he's released the next day. <laughs> All right. Uh, your third consecutive division game here out of the bye. Week 10 at Chicago, Monday night football. Declan. I, I do not like Mitch Trubisky. Um, I, 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 I don't think you're going to have to worry well. about him in week yeah, 10. That's a hot take, right? Yeah, hot take. I don't like Mitch Trubisky. I don't trust him at all. But it, this is similar to Seattle. Um, until the Vikings can prove to me they can win at Soldier Field, which I think they've done like once in my 27 years on this planet, uh, I, I think this is a loss, unfortunately. And I have to give the Vikings a loss somewhere on the schedule to a team I don't expect them to. I think it'll be in Chicago against the Bears. Do you know what I want Kirk to get up to a podium and say that, that he's going to change in 2020. I don't want to hear about off script plays. I don't want to hear about, I'm going to use my feet more. That's all garbage and BS. I want to hear him pound a podium and say, I'm going to win a game at soldier field. Damn it. <laughs> and he's going to do it in this game. It's a Monday night game. The bears are dysfunctional. I think uh, Kirk cousins is going to go to one and nine in his career on Monday night football. The Vikings are actually going to win this game at soldier field. I forgot that he's still over on Monday Night he's Football. He's going to be one and nine. I agree with Judd. He finally wins a Monday Night Football game. In fact, he he probably has this circled even more in bold than any other game on the schedule because he's sick of people talking about how he can't get a win on Monday Night Football. Tell me that, Kirk. Go into a, go up to a microphone and tell me that one. Well, or just go win the game. Just go win the game. I want some bravado. And if you're the Vikings defense, just don't get shredded by Nick Foles and Mitch Trubisky yeah, right. here. So, uh, so I've right. got the Vikings winning this one too. All right, back home for three straight, starting with Dallas, Week Eleven. Yeah, as we kind of talked about, you got to find a home loss somewhere. I'm pretty bullish on the Cowboys. I think all three of us are. Uh, I think this will be a fun, close knit game. I'm a big fan of Dak Prescott, but I think the Vikings probably come up short at home. This is probably one of the few games at US Bank Stadium that they'll lose. So I'll say the Vikings loss. Monday night euphoria in Chicago. It's a short week. There's a lot of of celebrations going on socially distance of course at various bars throughout the twin cities the vikings are not prepared for this game i'm with declan i think dallas is going to be just damn good dallas yeah. wins this game. the short week is tough here and i also think dallas takes a step forward here so you you come off that high if they win against chicago you lose on a short week to dallas uh then you get teddy bridgewater coming to u.s bank stadium <laughs> week 12 carolina declan Look, I, I, I love me some Teddy Bridgewater. He has my heart and then some, um, but I, I don't think that he'll be able to beat the Vikings at home. Uh, personally, this is a no-lose situation for me if Teddy Bridgewater does win, but I think the Vikings do pick up a win against Carolina, and they will uh, they would go to 7-4 and four in the season. I don't think Carolina's going to be as bad as a lot of people expect, but I don't think they come here and win yet. Uh, I think the Vikings win this game. I also think they win the game. I'm rooting for Teddy Bridgewater long-term. But this is going to be a tall task for him in this one here. Uh, your third home game against Jacksonville, win, win, win. Yeah, we yeah, could yeah, just yeah. move on here. Yes, Thank although you. although Jacksonville is the game that that since this team moved into the new stadium, it's lost. AFC, yeah, Buffalo, Indianapolis. That's true. I'm going win, but it's still a it's a dicey game to me. You're going win, but you're hedging by saying. I don't know. I, I'm just saying. I'm saying this fits the profile of, of a game that this team has lost a lot. I mean, Jacksonville has literally waved or the white flag like before the season, though. Jacksonville I'm is gung-ho. And Doug Marone might be pick. gone yeah. before this game. Jacksonville would love oh. the number one overall pick. Doug Marone, buffoon. Yes, that's a good point. I, I don't think he looks as... Yeah, no, he looks like a buffoon. Yeah, he, he does. No, he's he, a buffoon. Yeah, he does look like a he's buffoon. A buffoon. Um, all right, at Tampa Bay, Tom Brady and company, week 14. I've made my feelings very clear on how I feel like Tom Brady is going to play this year. This is a win. This is a win in Tampa Bay. It's a statement win. It shows the Vikings that they are one of the best teams in the NFC that everyone was sleeping on. They go and they put Tom Brady on the ground. The Vikings get a win in Tampa Bay. I'd love to have that confidence about going to play the Bucs. Uh, who, but by the way, a starting safety, I believe, going into week one, Antoine Winfield Jr. Congratulations to him. He's nice. going to be a really good player. Um, I do not have the confidence that Declan Goff has. I'm going loss. It's probably going to be a close game, but um, this seems this feels to me like the type of game that the Vikings find a way to lose on the road. I just I, feel weird uh, about it. I think Tampa Bay has so many weapons offensively. I mean, look how many points they scored without Tom Brady last year. So I, I don't think Tom has to be amazing. I think he just has to drive the car and not throw 15 interceptions. So... Um, so that, it's a loss for the Vikings home against Chicago week 15, Declan, uh, the Vikings get a win. They, they will not pick up a win at soldier field, but they will get it back here at us bank stadium. Uh, the Vikings get a win. Uh, 
I, I think that there's a chance that this is going to be the GM and head coach's last season in Chicago. Nagy, I don't know if he completely gets it, and so I think the Vikings win this game, sweep the series, and I don't I don't think Chicago's good. Yeah, Bears will have sensed the winds of change I don't like them. by this point, and I agree, Vikings win. And then you get a very short week again, home on Christmas Day, week 16, I'm sorry, on the road against New Orleans. Declan. Oh, this is so tough. Um, I would really like to pick the Vikings to win, especially on uh, the holiest of days, but I think this is going to be too tough. The Vikings uh, ha- had some sweet uh, sweet revenge in the playoffs against them this last year, but I think Drew Brees gets a win and the, and the Vikings drop one on Christmas. Saints win on a, a late field goal. Vi- okay, I think this is crazy. I think the, the Saints are a better team than the Vikings. The Vikings have the Saints number. I think the Vikings win this game on Christmas. And there's a chance that old Drew Brees, 40 years old, is just not even uh, healthy on, on short rest. But Jameis Winston comes season. and throws three touchdowns. Yeah, or and four interceptions. <laughs> Maybe five. Jeff Gladney drops one, unfortunately. <laughs> so I've got the Vikings winning that game, which brings us to Week 17 against the Detroit Lions on the road. Declan. Uh, the Vikings get a win. They close out their season with a the win. They uh, finish the season 11-5 and five in my book. Maybe flirt with the first round by. They probably would need 12 to solidify that, but I think they get 11 wins on the year, and they close it with a good win in Detroit. Well, the first, the first round by, only one team gets one this year, right? That's yeah. right. You, you're you're getting, getting, you're getting 13 yeah, they're, they're wins. They're not getting 13 yeah, yeah, wins. I forgot yeah. about yeah. that. Uh, Vikings at Detroit, week 17. Vikings win. There it is. I got a Vikings win here, too, on the road. Unless they decide that that game is meaningless, which means... Uh, if they win, I've got them eleven and five. Declan eleven and five. Judd Zolgad. Nine what was your seven. record? Nine and seven. Nine and seven. I feel like you've predicted nine and seven quite a few years. I ago. think I'm consistent, but but here's the thing that I'll tell you about this. The one thing is, I don't think this division is that good. So if the Vikings can get ten wins, I think there's a good chance they win the division with ten wins. Yeah. Uh, and, and plus, so with the wild card I'm extending to a seventh division. game, eight and eight probably gets you in. Yeah. Nine and seven gets you in. Yes. Well, eight and eight, it kind of depends. Um, you, you, I think you're going to have a bunch of teams. I think the Vikings sort of beat get up into the playoffs. Next. I don't think they're a great team. They've definitely got some flaws in youth, no. but I think that they get in. And if they can get to 10 wins, I think there's a good chance they win the NFC North. And so because we ran really long, let's save nerd football segment and it'll be a deep dive into the depth chart for tomorrow's show. We'll okay. save that for tomorrow's show. I can't. Really? Sorry, Judd. Sorry, Judd. Sorry, Judd. I've got all these notes on the well, depth we'll chart. We'll use them tomorrow. It's so oh, I Are they going to be? I can't, I can't pull these great thoughts. There's going to be more great thoughts. Are they going to be the... irrelevant tomorrow? I think they're going to be even more relevant because we'll yeah. know. I need, we'll, we'll, we'll know what Daniel Hunter did. I need to know what Daniel Hunter did today in practice. That's what I need to know. Happy Daniel Hunter Day. Where they officially have to tell us what the injury is today for the I first time. I love today for a lot of a lot of uh, <laughs> reasons, and that's my primary one. They have to tell us what's wrong with them. So that's a wrap on this episode of Purple Daily. Thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, thanks for strapping in for what will be one of the more unique and odd seasons in NFL history. But we're here for it on Purple Daily, and we will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> You think you and your Hall of Fame quarterback buddy like football? Well, John Gruden and Brett Favre don't just like football. They love it. Watch this throw rolling to my left, backing up. <laughs> That's awesome, man. And, and and I'll make another throw the next time. It's like it came right out of heaven. I mean, it had, to, I, it like had to drop in like a butterfly with sore feet. It had to drop in like that. Like a what? Football! Football, yeah!